Are you ready? I don't think you're ready for this. I wasn't ready for this. So months and months ago, last year at some point, I finally gave in and I read Ready Player One, right? And I just had a sleepless night because I read Ready Player Two in one city. <laughs> hmm. So let's let's get the housekeeping out of the way. It was of course wrote by Ernest Klein. It is indeed finished. And it was Will Wheaton that did the narrations on it. I didn't start it until late in the evening. Boo on me, because I know better. It's about an eight hour listen. No, I'm sorry. It's 13 hours and 46 minutes. So it was a really long day, but ask me if it was worth it. It most certainly was. So, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. If you liked Ready Player One, get Ready Player Two. Pay attention while you're listening to it, because just like the first one, there's so many Easter eggs, references, and things that tie into the first book, as well as what is laid out in this one. The interrelationships between the characters, absolutely freaking phenomenal. I really like that the pacing was the same in this one as it was in the first one. Now there's a couple places where it drags out a little bit, but that was needed. So the premises of this one is a little bit different. And the first one, we had the challenge from Halliday where they had to find the Easter egg in order to inherit the entire, well, virtual reality system that everybody is moving into pretty much. But there was such a large, like, raw, raw in that first book. I mean, everybody that I've ever spoken to that has read that was absolutely cheering and was having a hard time staying seated whenever they read it or listened to it. Will Wheaton does an absolutely phenomenal job reading this book. Can't really say I'm a big fanboy of Will Wheaton either. I mean, he seems like a fun guy, but he also seems like he'd be a you know, if you follow me. Now, I have slept since I've read that book and I had to because there's no way I could have made this review without it. <laughs> I, mean, I was just, I was absolutely dead on my feet yesterday. So I went all the way through it, I read it, but I'm counting it kind of as one day because there's been a nap. So where do we even start with this book? I don't think we will. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the way that the book elicited some feelings and nostalgia from me and how the characters interplayed with themselves and the storytelling of the book itself because I am not gonna be responsible for you not reading this book, not at all. The <laughs> premises, I'm gonna give at least that. There's a new thing that's a challenge that comes up for our main hero, the actual person that inherited everything, the Gunter himself that was a member of the High Five and he's slumming it. It's kind of funny to see because they achieved this goal and then the realisticness of life being what it is bleeds into this book heavily because instead of him having Sam still or Artemis, it's just not happening. And it's not happening because of his personality type and the realisticness of not having a goal in Because sometimes that can happen. I've read books and accounts from people that were in extreme traumatic experiences and then they instantly fall in love. But then after the fact, whenever trauma is gone and months or weeks have passed, then that just disappears. It's an instant bonding kind of a situation, which is really weird, unique, and interesting if you ever decide to check it out. It's kind of different. So Wade is having problems with his relationship. It's pretty well tamed. And <laughs> he's not having a good time with life. He kind of came across this new stuff that Halliday had left behind. And as soon as he started to release it and things were happening with this new technology, then there's a new contest. But he's, in the course of time, done absolutely nothing to actually start going through this, this process of going through this, not necessarily contest, but it gets opened up to everybody at that point. But of course, he's the only one that can actually do it. Or is he? Don't forget, we've got a lot of characters in this book. There was Og, H, and then you had the uh, two brothers and Sam and Og. Uh, don't forget about Og, he's pretty cool. But the way the contest is set up is that only the heir of Halliday can receive the, the, the thing. But there's a toll that must be paid in order to get it. You know, it's really laid out like a typical D&D type scenario or a quest line from a really big game or something like that. And that was one of the things that I really liked about this because let's face it, I do play a lot of games whenever I get a chance, but I've got a kid and he's at that point in life where me playing games is not going to be really good for him. Uh, so I laid off of that just a little bit. And whenever he finally gets to that point, maybe we'll be sitting together and playing games. Wait, we already do that. But anyway, so it's set up in a way where it's 
kind of familiar to trigger that nostalgia. And there is a payoff, of course, at the end as well. I'm reading it a second time at this point because I know there's so much that I didn't get on the first run and I'm excited to find it because it was a very enjoyable story just like the first one was. And seeing the way that Helm and Sam are not necessarily trying to patch, Wade's trying to move past, but not really. He's doing that typical, not necessarily beta slash simp thing, but what he's doing is he's just having trouble realizing that it comes from within. And I think that with this story, whenever it's completed for him, that that might be something that he's learned at this point, because the first one was kind of, you gotta have friends to make it. You gotta be able to trust people and assume the best from the people that are around you. Now, granted, a lot of the stuff that was in that story wasn't focused on that because that's the other part of reality is that there's always going to be that person or thing or company or whatever that's going to fight against you to keep you from doing what you need to do. But if you got friends, you can you can all kind of just make the best of it. And that was, that was what I got from it, the first book that one of our read it. The second one is more of the story of it comes from within. You've, you've got to appreciate what you have in your capabilities and trust in yourself to be able to get there. Now, this is not going to be a motivational speech. We're not going to go that direction, but that's just what I was getting from the read. So we get to learn a little bit more about age. We get to see all these characters after they've made it, after they've become pretty much the richest individuals. And do they squander their resources and just live a life of lavishness. No, they start being productive citizens when nobody else can be. They start heading initiatives to try to figure out things to solve for homelessness. They start trying to figure out ways to get humanity off of the planet or parts of humanity off the planet. So just in case we're not completely wiped out. Some of this sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? But in the same sense of real world, you know, like realism, the characters are kind of shunned because of this. They go from being the underdogs to the ones that are on top. But even though they are the good guys and they're trying to help the planet, there's a lot of that, well, you made it, screw you. You know, now, you, now you're there, well, we don't like you now. Uh, and that is such a thing that happens with us as a species, isn't it? Kind of weird to end just to look at that, but it's true. Sometimes we're like, hmm, maybe we should accept the gifts that are given to us and use them for everybody. Might be a better place if we did. Who knows? But we get to see some Sam. We get to see some H. We get to see Og. And we get to see Ogog, which is very, very nice. Um, and then there's a lot of, let's dispel the imagery of Halliday. Everybody has this, he was this great noble creature and being but that's usually not realistic either and so that's that's the thing that i really enjoyed in this book in the first read was well, let's make this no let's get this out let's let's be realistic completely so that was kind of refreshing to see a author not afraid to explore that not afraid to put that realism of life into his book even though it's completely fantasy but because of the nature of the material in it it has every right to be and should be the most crazy, insane ride that you could ever take. I just, I, I can't say enough good about it because it's well wrote. The dialogue in between the characters is completely natural. There's not a problem with timeline. There's not a problem with jumping from here to here. There's not a problem with inconsistencies. I really like it when the details are true to themselves. I really like it whenever characters are true to themselves. And it shows that Ernest has that capability to do these sorts of things and that he's honest with himself in his writing. So kudos, man. I mean, as far as like sci-fi writers that I have enjoyed in the last year, every time I see a Ready Player book from probably this point forward, I'm going to be super excited, mainly because it's just, it's so well done. So I'm going to get off of my soapbox at this point and... <laughs> I, I just, is it worth your time, efforts, and energies? What the hell are you doing? Go out and get it if you haven't got it. If you can get it on a list so that you can enjoy it at your own leisure, do it. And the reason why is because Will Wheaton enjoyed the book, I'm assuming, because his performance in the book was really well. And if you're not listening to him do the book and you're just reading it yourself, if you've ever played Atari, if you've ever played with NES or Super NES whenever you were growing up, uh, if you were a bit of a geek at all, this book will appeal to you as will the first one. So yes, it's worth your time, efforts, and energies. That is the long of the short. And beyond that, and all the other tropes that we usually pop out, that's it. You've made it. Congratulations. You've now reached level two. Thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. And leave your comments in the section down below. Be happy to do that. This is the most interesting thing we found this week in the comment section. Thank you so much for leaving it. We really, very, very, very much appreciate you. Thank you. And beyond that, I'm not sure which one of these 
two videos over here you would pick. But if you do, we'll see you in the next video.